What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome back to Pokemarts. Uh, yes, we're finally back with another episode. It has been quite a while and I do apologize for that. Uh, past handful of months have just been really busy for myself, but um, yeah, happy to be back. The goal of today's video is kind of to take a snapshot on how various things are doing in the TCG uh, ahead of this weekend's uh, the next Logan Paul first edition box opening. Uh, if you remember last time this happened in October, at that point, like even though things were already crazy high prices, things really shot up from there. Uh, so kind of speculating on what's going to happen next. So this will be a nice kind of like reference point for the next few, let's say couple months. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, today we're starting with Shining Fates, the brand new set that is oh so hard to find. Uh, opened a little bit for myself and it was a lot of fun. Opened a bunch for my patrons and yeah, really enjoying it so far. The first thing I want to note here is, you know, no, by no means a surprise, the prices on the secondary market are insanely high. Now, just on TCG Player, everything is what a good two plus times the regular price uh so pretty unfortunate that you know everyone is struggling to find it uh, i think the whole one of the points of this video will be you know if you are struggling to find it you know weighing the option of all right do i pay double the price or if i do want to uh still want to uh you know dabble in the hobby man i can look to some potential alternatives as far as buying signals so we'll go through a bunch of those um, so a couple things to note here, obviously sealed prices are insanely high, but let's just go to filter for just the cards real quick and a couple things to note. Um, so first off, uh, I really like how the full art supporters are in the, they're part of the Shining Fate set, not part of the Secret Vault. More importantly, they're in that rare slot as opposed to the reverse slot, uh, which means that, you know, you can still get a shiny and a full art supporter. Um, let's just take a look. Uh, price wise, Skyla's doing the best. I think there's like this waifu thing going on. Um, one thing I really don't like is the absence of a very, you know, chase card from uh, Shiny Star V, and that is Marnie. So, this is a really cool artwork, and um, yeah, so we don't have this. I'm pretty disappointed, and you know, it feels kind of cash grabby from my point of view because, like, from Pokemon's point of view, it's like, hey, we have Charizard, we we don't need to add anything else. People will go crazy, and everyone is. Uh, but I definitely think this would have been, you know, very much a chase card for the set, and it would have been great because this was in that rare slot. So that's gonna be uh, it for the shiny fates. Let's keep going. All right, moving on to the shiny vault of the set. Obviously, uh, the big Charizard shiny V Max at the top. Let's just take a quick look. Looking around mid 500s for near mint on TCG Player. You know, first week of release. Um, it's interesting to look at the prices, but I'm not going to dive too deeply into like eBay listings and stuff like that. Uh, we'll probably give it a couple weeks for things to kind of settle. Uh, but what I do want to point out is, you know, I think it's it is fair to compare the set to Hidden Fates and uh, looking at it is like, ooh, this is a lot of fun to open so far and I'm really excited, but it's still not the same. Uh, and we can kind of point to basically the rest of the shiny vault uh, as evidence of that. So second place is the shiny Suicune. Uh, cool, we got the legendary dogs or cats, <laughs> you know, or we got one of them, uh, but it's interesting to me that it's not a V or V Max that is in second place, it is just a regular shiny. Um, then we got Ditto and I do like the gold Eternatus. Uh, we actually pulled one um, in our live stream on, uh, what was that, Tuesday? And then we got Lapras uh, in the middle of there. And so, you know, I do like the addition of the gold. It does seem to be lacking as far as really exciting Pokemon to pull beyond Eternatus. And I guess Ditto's pretty cool. What I do like, however, is that the regular Shinies at least have new artworks. Uh, it's always kind of bothered me that, you know, they're kind of rinse repeating this idea of shiny or i guess in this case we'll have a gold variant but we're just going to keep the art we don't need to do anything just change the color scheme but at least the regular shinies don't really follow that uh that you know laziness i guess so to speak so uh kudos to them but back to the topic of hidden fates and why you know hidden fates is still on top as far as best modern set in my opinion um we still have charizard still around that 500 dollars mark i find that pretty impressive and let's just take a look. You want to pick one up off TCG player. Ooh, mod play. So let's find our first near mint is almost 700, although that's a 
relatively new store, but they're actually right below it. So $700 on TCG player for a near mint Charizard. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. So like second place is Suicune. Uh, for Hidden Fates, we have all the evolutions um, or a handful of evolution. We got Mewtwo and then, yeah, the, the Cynthia is nice, but uh, at that point we're kind of, I do like Shining Fates, how the full art support is in that rare slot, but again, there's no Marnie. Um, but yeah, so we have so many cards that uh, Hidden Fates that are still above like, you know, all the, the Suicune. So I feel like, you know, Hidden Fates definitely a much better set. Uh, the Even though Shining Fates, it's always exciting to get any Shiny. It is still like, all right, well, you know, we're still hunting that Charizard here. There's so many good hits, uh, Mewtwo and the Evolutions that I don't care which one I get. I'm going to have, I'm going to feel, you know, really relieved when I pull any of them. All right, let's go through some stuff on eBay. Um, Umbreon. The second place, I feel like, um, you know, when Hidden Fates first came out, I really underestimated Umbreon and how he would do. PSA 9, a little shy of 300. Let's see if we can find a 10. Wow, 525. I think the last time I look at this, I kind of, in my head, I kind of noted as Umbreon around a $400 card. It does look like he is at that $500 mark. Very impressive. Uh, shout outs to, let's see, Richard Omega. I think we pulled two of them for him. Uh, so definitely the shiny... Evolutions are doing quite well. All right, let's go to the Charizard PSA 10 sold listings 1500 I feel like this guy's been all over the place uh, during You know the past 12 months I then got up to like 2000 and then kind of crept down close to I want to say um, Like around 1200 let's look like it's moving back up. We do have some a sold listing for 1800 and again, so I, I, the whole point of this exercise is, all right, this is kind of like a snapshot and I'm very curious to see how things will do after this weekend's, the break of that first edition box. And I think this is definitely a card that could see some movement. All right, Hidden Fates Sealed. Um, not a big surprise that uh, while there are, have been some sightings of Hidden Fates at stores like Target, obviously those things get gobbled up. You know, the shelf life of Hidden Fates in the stores is probably like in this, you know, minutes, maybe seconds. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there was a reprint of the ETBs, and I think those are still, you know, for, for a couple brief seconds are available at stores. Uh, so it did cause the price to go from, I think it was like 300, uh, about at its max down to about 150. Uh, tins going, and these are sold listings by the way, so tins going for about 60, so triple the price that it should be available. Whew, weird times. Unbroken Bonds, Rushizard, I feel like has done surprisingly poorly and definitely i think it's a really cool card uh to pick one up you know probably won't be psa 10 but you're picking one up off tcg player for as low as 125 actually it does sound pretty appealing uh, maybe this card will get more uh kind of like the recognition in my opinion it deserves but even near mint under 200 uh, again i feel like i'm always surprised at how um how much that price hasn't moved it does seem like blastoise gx and this was a, a mistake i'm surprised i made not having more of these blast i don't think i have any of these blastoise gx blastoise coming in for under a 150 um but there's a lot of cool cards in here and i think maybe this set is maybe a little underappreciated and especially one where to buy it seal stuff is really expensive although what isn't oh uh, we got red challenge green uh gardevoir or Scarter Sylveon uh, coming in at pretty good prices, like 60, 30, 40, and then 50. Well, they're insanely good card. A lot of cool stuff in this set. Uh, but let's go to kind of like one interesting thing is, you know, I think I always underestimated uh, elite trainer boxes. You know, I'm, I'm more into the booster boxes. The ETBs, you know, they just take up a lot of space if you have, if you like to collect ETBs. But man, the prices are really high. Doesn't look like there's any available on TCG Play. Oh no, I unopened for $300. Reminder, these things will MSRP for $40. Let's just go through some of the sets. I don't really want to get into all this, all the singles, but I just want to focus on the ETBs for right now. Team up, Lois on TCG is 500. Unified Minds only 230, only 235. Cosmic Eclipse 2 260. Uh, Lost Thunder to over 200, and then Celestial Storms, surprisingly high. You know, for I feel like this set was 
kind of underappreciated, but then, I don't know if it's just the Rayquaza on the box. There's only one on DCG Player for $400. Uh, I didn't want to go through all these things on eBay, but I guess the point here is, you know, I didn't, th I didn't know that there was so much of a um, demand or like, I guess, ETB collectors. I kind of underestimated that. Again, me primarily sitting on the booster box side where it's just more packs for the uh, the, for the money and as far as like if you want to collect them EDBs just take up a lot of space all right real quick but not everything is a winner I think one thing that I bought too many of are these trainer toolkits um, I think that regular price is what 30 if you pre-order you could get it for like low 20s maybe mid 20s and right now it's <laughs> still at 30 um, I guess not too, not that surprising in hindsight. It does have the cute Dedenne, uh, but I guess Dedenne is more, still more of a playable card than even that cute version. Not much of a collector's item. Uh, whenever, like the last time I was at Target, absolutely bare except for that Battle Academy thing, and this product is all that's available. Um, inside, I think the original release had did have Unbroken Bonds pack, but then had double Rebel Clash and something else. So, you know, not the best pack selection. Uh, I'm actually not sure if that's changed for the more recent print wave. I feel like I have heard um, some people complain that they didn't have Unbroken Bonds. So, um, yeah, not everything is a winner. <laughs> Sword and Shield base. Uh, I find this one a little interesting. Marnie con or seems to take taking that top slot. To be honest, I'm not sure where it was uh, before. Obviously, Marnie always a very popular card, uh, but it does seem like the gold Zacian is going down. I wonder if this is kind of like impact from the premium box coming out that did feature the. Uh, kind of like just the black and gold version of ZC and Zamazenta. I think that one's going for like $30. So to pull like the secret rare from Sword and Shield base, uh, only like $40 is kind of interesting. Actually, Marnie is actually higher than that as far as like the lowest price on TCG player. Snorlax rounding the field about mid 45. Actually, let's take a quick look, close look at this one. I feel like this card, I imagine would go up over time. Uh, it's such a <laughs> iconic VMAX in my opinion. Uh, let's just take a quick look actually yeah good amount of near mint available for under fifty dollars champion's path oh the set is brutal two chase cards and everything else so low uh how often do you see like rainbow rares uh, and ones i think are pretty good like the guard of our peers those are in my opinion very nice rainbows uh them should be close to single or pierce seven dollars rainbow uh guard of our just over in low teens Dreadnought, I'm not a big fan of Dreadnought, but $8 for Secret Rare is brutal. Yeah, if if you are someone that, whether it's because you couldn't find product or you weren't crazy about the set, didn't buy into the hype and were like, you know what, I'm not going to chase this sealed product, I'll just wait to buy singles, good call. Like the Charizard, even the Charizard is not that expensive, both of them on TCG, TCG Player 300 or lower, and then everything else really cheap. So, um, you know, and that, that's kind of like one of the points here is, yes, I, if you can't find seal product, I know it takes, it removes the chase entirely, uh, but then, as opposed to trying to chase a pull, looking towards trying to chase a completed collection for whatever your goals are. Um, and then when you kind of go that route, some of these sets are very, very affordable. Darkness Ablaze, a set that I think might be undervalued. Um, main chase card, Charizard V Max, obviously heavily impacted by the fact that the rainbow is not until Champion's Path and then the shiny in uh, Shining Fates. But, uh, you know, I still think this card looks amazing. Uh, pick up a Charizard under $100, I think it's always something to consider. And then second place, Rillaboom, uh, interesting card uh, being that, you know, it's you know it is a shiny the the gold shiny and while there is kind of like a reprint shiny face but this one is obviously the full art variety so i have to imagine this one will be much better um even against i'm curious how this card will do you know from a non-competitive standpoint from a collector standpoint how will the regular real boom do against like the real boom v and v max in shining fates uh but on that we also have some other cool cards i'm a big fan of scissor i'm surprised a little surprised to see salamance over the scissor and then we do have the eternatuses um also butterfree i wouldn't underestimate butterfree i could see this doing well long term uh we do have the colossal and then here's a charizard that i do i i find you know this reminds me of the burning shadows base art 
And I think, do we have a tab open for that card down the line? But anyway, let's just stick here real quick. Uh, to pick up a Charizard V for $7 on TCG Play. Maybe there's something there. Uh, what do we have? Okay, here it is. All right, so that Burning Shard Shadows Charizard. So the um, I'm kind of looking for the, yes, this one, to see how this card is doing for sold listing 180 PSA 10. I feel like this was kind of slept on. Uh, because like oh well you know there was the full art version you could get as a promo you could chase the rainbow but this card I find really interesting uh, has a different art um, than like the the rainbow variety and I think like was probably really cheap once upon a time um, now actually I guess not too not too much right now but I think there's a lot of quality issues with burning shadows but if you are to get a PSA 10 looking at like 180 so to circle back to all right does this Charizard will this eventually follow a similar pattern if you can look to pick these up now for seven so that you can have a good amount of tries to get that PSA 10 and maybe this could have a good future um, similar to that burning shadows Charizard speaking of burning shadows Charizard let's take a look at him I think this is Kind of when I kind of, or when I got back into the hobby, like Burning Shadows was still on the shelves. So um, kind of like the first thing I really chased. It was a lot of fun. And even though there's you know the the shiny variety, which I also love, uh, this card will always have you know some sentimental value for me. And always pretty expensive. Near mint four fifteen. Let's take a look at eBay sold listings. Looking for. The rainbow, ooh, Aust Australia sales are always kind of weird. Let's try to find a non-Australian one. Okay, here we go. Best offer accepted <laughs> from 3,700. Is there any, ooh, all right, here we go. $3,000 for this. I think when I got back into the hobby, I was like 500. Um, so this one I can understand. I think the pop population is actually pretty brutal for between uh, 10 and nine. Like anything I find that any of the reprint burning shadows had a lot of quality issues um so if you do have one of these kind of like ungraded i do recommend you get great if you think you could get nine or ten i feel like some of the ones that are pack fresh now are you're looking at eight psa eight psa seven right off the bat which is very discouraging um but it does you know if you do have those really mint ones uh something to definitely hold on to evolutions um <laughs> such a weird weird situation uh there have been a bunch of videos by other youtubers you know that, that i've watched a bunch of them kind of explaining why thousand dollar price mark makes sense uh, i'm not here to argue one way or another but i definitely fall under that camp of kind of like when opening a lot of sealed products or a lot of those promo boxes like oh the mandatory uh evolutions pack that that uh no one cares about <laughs> and now the booster box prices is at a thousand uh, so interesting uh let's just take a quick look i i think it was basically hovering under a thousand that thousand dollar price mark does seem to be quite the uh, hump to get over yeah so by now 99 uh every once in a while there's 850 and i feel like every once in a while there's kind of like a 500 dollar one that maybe just someone listed it not realizing what the going rate is and then it gets gobbled up instantly um and back to those ETBs, actually I feel like I'm kind of surprised that these aren't higher when we saw uh, some of the other Sun and Moon based or era um, ETBs going for really high. These things going for around um, under 200, although I think this was reprinted not too long ago. Actually, one thing I do want to check is those Kanto Power Boxes. Power Box, uh, let's say it had 10 box, 10 packs inside, like what an amazing product that came out at a at amazing time just in time for to uh when in my opinion evolutions like really spiked uh though actually it applies to everything but they didn't print enough of it and uh these things i think they were 40 dollars at start going for four times the price um yeah who knew this is a home run product i think when i first saw it i was like why is this why does this product is exist and now i was like oh man what i would do to find one of these in store all right now i want to cover some topics in the tcg that i personally have you know uh, a great interest in and I feel like it's a lot of fun to collect and that is the you know a lot of the unique Japanese promos so starting with any of the kind of like um, cosplay Pikachus Pancho Pikachus uh, I think when I was like picking these up like years ago 
Uh, actually, I'm not going to get into what they were at the time, uh, but let's just take a look. The Charizard ones, about 2000. These are Australia again. Uh, and there's just so many different varieties. A lot of these are actually these um, non-full art ones I don't have, uh, but a raw Charizard going, Mega Charizard, um, the Mega Charizard Y going for 950. The Magic Carp uh, close to 15. Uh, man, pretty crazy prices. Uh, and again, I feel like you know one thing if you struggling to find sealed product, this would be a Japanese promos, especially the unique ones. Um, that if you do some research and then your assumption is that won't get an English printing, I think they're all great choices to pick pick up uh, for stuff to pick up especially uh, right after release when you can get it you know if it's even if it's imported from Japan not too much higher than regular price um, and so like the Pokemon Center is basically these these promos whenever I'm not sure if it's if they remodel or reopen a new one for these Pokemon Centers but they have you know for the the town that it's in uh, then they have a special promo and I don't actually don't know how much these kind of retail for I feel like upon release i can usually pick them up for anywhere between like 10 to, to low 20s per card and for all of them you know i feel like these are very safe bets they always almost always go up uh we're seeing these for 60 kanazawa i actually gave uh two of the kanazawas away i think um yeah i think it started around 20 now they're i think some of them are if you want to buy now i think it's like close to like 70 80 uh this tea party very cute um and if this is something you're interested in actually we'll just get into this now so this is just bulbapedia i just searched for uh you know the the new promo so i think it's s s p promos and this is just a page that i have bookmarked that i look at every morning i'll scroll down to the bottom just to see if there's anything new that's coming out uh just so that i can be prepared to look for them figure out when the release date is and then try to pick them up on ebay for not outrageous prices i feel like japanese promos in my opinion is a game where you just have to stay with the current events um, and then you can get them at a reasonable price and they're all very unique or if you do just target the very unique ones like those Pokemon centers um, I feel like that's a great thing to start looking into if you're in that category of you know consume that I cannot find sealed product and I don't want to I really don't want to pay double triple the price for them all right, a few more Japanese promos to go through. Mario Pikachu. Oh, one of, I think this is still my favorite Japanese promo of all time. That Mario Pikachu looks amazing. $1,800 for a PSA died. Uh, so in case you didn't know, they have Mario and Luigi. Full art and kind of like the, the regular one. So here's all four of them. Uh, at this point, you know, the prices have skyrocketed probably can't get into it although i can't imagine these ever going down under any situation uh just a beautiful card beautiful collab and then screams um i'm actually pretty happy with the scream collection i currently have um have like a lot of them at psa maybe i'll get them back <laughs> in the next two years or something um but very beautiful cards and this one you know uh work card all right so let's just try to find all right if we were to want to dabble in uh screen promos now so these are sold listings uh rowlet unused that's kind of a weird word um looking at 90 these do seem kind of high so it's like a hundred dollars for seems like the the normal three the rowlet psyduck and eevee although we haven't seen eevee yet then pikachu obviously goes much higher um all right you can pick up all three yeah so hundred dollars a pop for these um it feels pretty high but you know the thing is a great example very unique promo if you want the pikachu and mimikyu we're gonna have to pay a lot more all right now on to a set of japanese promos that i've been this is another thing I look at every single day, and there just are so few of them. These Uniqlo Warm Pikachu promos. Um, very interesting cards. Uh, very rare. I think the next tab are so pretty expensive. I actually don't know much about like how much they cost initially, uh, but this is sold listing, so Pokemon Uniqlo PSA. And yeah, there's only like five of them even here and they're all really low grade i guess there's a psa 9 uh but then six and four i think the only thing i own is one of these in like a five or a six really low grade um and i guess my initial goal <laughs> this is eventually to collect them all some in psa graded uh the grade's not that important but um yeah they're just really rare 
All right, last but not least, we're going to talk about some Charizard cards, starting with the base set Unlimited Charizard, uh, just to quickly look at the pop reports. So roughly, um, well, okay, see it. okay, so between these is what? I don't know, close to, I don't know, getting close to like 10,000 of these between, uh, Actually, let's just focus on eight, nine, and eight, ten. Ridiculously high. But the thing I want to focus on is kind of like, um, you know, why I kind of want to take this reference point, this uh, you know, snapshot of what the market is look like for stuff that I'm interested in. Uh, so this is the. Let's just zoom in a little bit. This was during that crazy time, and if we look at that infamous opening, happened on October 9th. Come back to this graph, October 9th. We have to go this way a little bit. All right, so start of October, PSA 9 base set unlimited Charizard for 1800. And then we just went up and up. Man, what is that? 5,000. Absolutely insane. Uh, I guess it was a overreaction. And then we came back down to, I guess, reality. Basically, you know, a month later, back to that normal or what it was before, uh, you know, under, under 2K. And uh, so, like, this is the. I'm not sure calm before the storm it does seem like there is like a gap between data being available I'm not sure why uh, and more recent ones starting to go over that 2k mark uh, so be interesting in the next month or so what this chart shows will it have some insane spike like last time uh, it'll be interesting to see um, but uh, one thing I do want to let's just take a look is uh, I do think base and limit Charizard is something that in, in my mind, you know, everyone should consider if they can add it to their collection. And let's just like eliminate uh, as far as like what grade is like, all right, well, pick whatever one you're comfortable with. Let's just take a look at kind of like the lower end, you know, even if you have to go as low as uh, three. So maybe three could be picked up around 250. Like, you know, will these go up? Probably not, not that much. Probably won't see much movement. But I think this is just like an iconic part of the hobby and, um, you know, is don't get too distracted by like oh well i can't afford that i know just ask yourself on this question like all right is just to have it in my collection is a real low grade within my range um and because i do think it's i'm really you know i treasure every single copy that i have in psa okay along a very similar vein uh so this is uh, so this white purpose website, by the way, is very useful, PokemonPrice.com. I went to Base Set Unlimited, and let's just pick a grade. We'll say grade seven um, to extend that. Uh, it's like, oh, I think you know Charizard is a great thing to have in a collection on any grade. How about we try to bring that up a little bit higher to, all right, what if I want Base Sets, uh, the entire set graded? Uh, we'll pick a low grade. And my point here is, again, just check if this is within like a range of something that you're willing to buy because maybe it's lower than you might have expected uh, so obviously Charizard will always be expensive so if we're looking at seven all right uh, maybe maybe Charizard's missing from that and I think that's pr maybe appropriate uh, so one thing I like I like the idea of is creating kind of like a frame uh, to hang on the wall or something that has like the basic cards graded and I would be fine having you know all of the cards except for Charizard uh, in there or maybe the Charizard replaced with a PSA 4 or something uh, and then the rest can be 7 because maybe 7 is not too bad even Blastoise you know just north of 300 but then the rest of them you know maybe my point here is uh, think about like alright to pick up the base set hollows um, at a grade like 7 maybe that's within your range we take a look at almost all the cards minus like obviously the starters and such are all south of a hundred dollars alakazam one of the more popular ones in my opinion 70 uh then go down from there gyarados actually this hundred seems kind of high uh clefairy i feel like some of the times you can pick up clefairy for really cheap uh but then everything else you know below we ignore the starters everything else is just inside a hundred dollars uh so again it's like all right do i buy a shining fates etb um or do i buy a base set unlimited psa 7 zapdos you know uh to me i would kind of like if i were given those two options as far as like what my collecting goals are it's like all right maybe i want to start dabbling in uh base unlimited just to really drive that point home as far as like we'll take the etb specifically for example i feel like i see some on ebay for like a hundred which then people are like oh actually that's really cheap it's like 
okay, do I pick up that, that Zapdos maybe or look into some of the base set unlimited for PSA 7 or pick up that ETB? Just consider like, as far as what you're getting with that ETB, when in my opinion, if you do want to pick up Shining Fates, just go for what the, uh, the lowest price per pack. Uh, when it comes to this coveted ETB, like, yeah, I guess you get sleeves and stuff, but I imagine the reason you're getting is because of the promo. You can pick up the promo for $7 on TCG Player. Uh, you know, this is not the same as Hidden Fates ETB with that epic stained glass bird art. Uh, that thing is a masterpiece in my opinion that this EV, very cute. I love the fact that his attack is called G-Max Cuddle, um, but they are not the same. Uh, and, you know, so, Again, another thing to weigh when you're between art. Do I overpay for product or do I want to kind of like re-examine my collecting goals and approach this from a different angle? All right, last two tabs. Just because I like to keep tabs on these cards. Base Charizard Shadowless PSA. Obviously very expensive stuff. Let's see, this is first edition here, Shadows. And I usually have to put on some special filters just to weed out like uh people that have ebay listings that just sneak in the word shadowless or charizard even though it's not shadowless or charizard uh so this is for 2k and above uh so psa 2 shadowless charizard best offer best offer accepted at 6000 psa 6 um at 25 oh wait this is oh this is first edition uh so it's kind of hard to fill out the first edition i would because uh, like technically it is shadowless but uh, seven around 3K, a, that's an unlimited. All right, so not, oh, not the easiest uh, search to do, which is kind of frustrating. But then the last one is that coveted base Charizard first edition, PSA graded, graded three, 6,000. These are sold listings, by the way. Pretty crazy. Uh, PSA two at 6,000, uh, five at 7,000. This was on auction. Very interesting. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're not getting, I don't want to make any points about this because obviously this stuff is super expensive, just something I like to keep tabs on. Uh, but that's going to be it for me for this episode of Pokemarts. Uh, felt a little bit rough just because I haven't done this in a really long time, uh, but I really do want to start pumping these out at a regular pace uh, and not just kind of like looking at various listings on eBay. I really want to, I think one topic I, kind of like uh, scripted in my head, been scripting in my head for like months is kind of like talking about how to look at English promos when it comes to these various uh, products that come out and kind of like what to look for as far as like, all right, yeah, maybe it's just something I pick up one of because I want to open it to like, oh, actually this promo is something special. So a topic I've been meaning to get to, hopefully get to it soon. Uh, but as always guys, thanks for watching. If you have topics you want to suggest for future episodes, let me know in a comment down below. I'm Wanda Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.